Welcome to Bible Cufflinks and Stilettos. We are here tonight and you know that we're here to have open and honest, real, practical conversations surrounding sexual issues, concerns, and practices amongst faith-based couples for better relationship outcomes. Listen to me. We know sex isn't the magic solution for everything that's going on in our marriages, but listen to me. Good sex sure does make the marriage nice. Thank you for joining us for the continuation of this episode. Please enjoy the program and don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. Let her tell you, yes, babe, we can go faster. You can go deeper, go harder. Let her tell you what to do, because that way you can help her through whatever pain that she might be going through. So that's question three. Now question four says, what's a good way to honor my wife or husband in sex? Now honoring your spouse during sex has a lot to do with whether you are honoring them before and after sex. Now here are seven points that show you how you can dishonor your spouse. And I say how you dishonor your spouse so that you know what not to do so that you can honor your spouse. No, number one is when you use crude language, especially when you're referring to sex, the body parts or foreplay in language that is vulgar. And we know what the vulgar language is. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes we have a clean up a language, ladies and gentlemen. And you know, romance is not vulgar. Romance is not vulgar. So let us use words, especially when we are talking about our spouses, when we are talking about their sex organs, when we're talking about the act of sex itself. Use language that is wooing, that will get us in the mood. Show that you respect the person by using those kinds of loving talks, all right? Number two, not understanding the effects of conflict. Listen to me. Men can recover quicker from a conflict than a woman. And when men talk about recover, them good they're ready for sex right after. You and the person cuss and one bugger words were exchanged, and right after that, he said, Stop going on someone and them start touch you because I'm ready. I'm not busy about the arguments. Him just know say, all right, this is the way men will solve this. But for women, it's a lot more than that. Their, their minds are not there yet. And especially when men try to initiate sex after an argument, and especially after the woman has recovered, it makes it harder for the woman to get into it. And then when she does it out of guilt, that adds another layer of conflict. And you don't want to do that. So you have to understand that, all right, give her some time. To kind of breeze out and do whatever so that she can come back as the woman you want her to be yeah now the next one is not understanding the connection between sex and romance um gentlemen uh sex is not always romance okay not because you put it down mean it's romantic no all right that is like mistaking the vacation with the road trip all right gentlemen and a solid single all right you have to make sure say you love an arm man makes you feel good gentlemen makes you feel good man it's not always all about sex but it's sometimes the words that you say how you touch her how you woo her so who are the man who are man because listen to me getting to the sex is always half the fun. Next thing, you yeah, keep sex stats. No, man, that is not a way to honor your wife. You have to talk about things like, uh, look here, we only have one sex one time this week. I thought if I did the chores around the house, would I get a payback with this and that? Brother, sister, no. We don't keep sex stats, okay? We don't do that. And that's a way to dishonor your spouse in marriage. Another thing is when you demand some sexual actions that feel demeaning. Look here, whatever sexual activity that you and your spouse engage in, both of you must feel comfortable in doing it. 
Now, if you are going to suggest some things that a person don't feel comfortable with, or probably they're not yet comfortable with, that is you dishonoring them, especially if you're not vexing them because they don't do it. Eh? And then you're going to tell them something like, that's why I'm on Gar Road. In the Hello, Guana Road, you know? Guana Road. Guana Road. Because I am not going to embarrass myself or demean myself for your pleasure. So, Guana Road. I have to trust you to do certain things, don't it? So don't force it on me. Don't force it on your lady. Don't force it on your man, ladies and gentlemen. It is good for a couple of the training things. We know that. But you should be patient if your spouse is cautious about trying those new things. Yes? Yes? Yes, man. All right? So make sure, too, that if you are demanding them to wear something will look sexy, you don't need to demand the person to feel, for, 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 look, for wear something that looks sexy. But they must feel comfortable in that too. Because if me have about three belly and you tell me someone must wear bikini in our bedroom, I don't to feel too comfortable wearing the bikini in our bedroom because I have three belly. So I work up to it, man. Don't force me and tell me something like, you know, other woman out there, like, brother, go around, you know? go around. Leave me alone. Me want to wear the big nighty and then slowly peel off the big nighty off of my tree belly. So, sir, if you want me to wear that, I don't feel comfortable yet. You're not even gonna make me feel lovely. You're not even gonna say, baby, I love a tree belly and kiss my tree belly. Hello. So, those things are you not honoring me as your wife? Me telling you some why you wear um oil pan your big belly or oil pan your, 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 your six pack. I ain't really ready for that yet. And me tell you say, boy, so and so out of road, we do it. That's not me honoring you. So if we realize that our conversation or the way we speak are like these things, maybe we're not honoring our spouses. All right, so we need to change how we operate. Now, the fifth question, are men supposed to lead in sex as in other parts of the relationship? And is there an appropriate balance for initiating intimacy? Now, I, I sometimes I'm afraid when we hear this whole talk of men supposed to lead. So, um, men are supposed to, Say I want some sex. I'm supposed to just jump when you say I'm ready. No man. It's a two-way street. I am showing you that I desire you by initiating, and you're showing me that you desire me by initiating. So yes, there are times when men can step up and you know take control in the bedroom. And that's a, another conversation. <laughs> that's another conversation but there is definitely a place for balance in the relationship sex is most enjoyable when you know your wife feels sexy and if their desire to see you know themselves in certain lights come 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 to the fore so if they feel like all right you know tonight I am feeling so sexy right now. I, as I walk through the door, mother just go up to him and just start kissing him and start. Da -da -da -da. Yes, man, there's a time and place for that. There's a time and place for that. And, you know, I don't want our men to feel like they have to always be launching out when it comes to the whole initiation of sex. There are some men who actually like when the woman approaches them, especially their wives, when she approaches them and said, and not even say nothing, just start doshing for the playing I'm here, blowing them ears, licking ears, them something there, start feeling on them chest. And they like that. So ladies, I don't want you to feel like you must just lie there and just wait until the man say, baby, no, 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 no. There is an appropriate balance where you can show your desire 
and he can show his desire. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there has to be mutual desire in the marriage. Question six says, how do you overcome expectations you have from past sexual re relationships or experiences? Now, first, I need us to understand that the person you are marrying is not the person from your past. First and foremost, the person you are marrying is not the person from your past. As a result, you can't use those experiences to dictate what happens in your current relationship. Let me repeat that. As a result, you should not, cannot use those experiences to dictate what happens in your current relationship. Whatever is in the past was in the past. All right? Part of taking every thought captive, that 2 Corinthians 10, verse 5, is to see the lie we are tempted to believe as false and detestable. Things like the past girlfriend or wife who was a passionate lover is not the standard of a good wife. Think about that. Because if they were, you'd be with them, right? That reduces what it means to be a good wife, to being a sex object. And your wife is not a sex object, all right? The next thing is that the past girlfriend who punished you by withholding sex or the past wife or the past husband or boyfriend who punished you by withholding sex is not something to be conquered in this marriage. We're not create that history there for anything in our marriage. We're not, we're not even going to look on that. That person is not this person. All right, so we'll mash down the light there. The third thing we're going to mash down is that the past girlfriend or wife or husband, boyfriend, whoever, who cheated on you is not something to be controlled in this marriage. They're not going to do that. Let's, let's, let's give them the benefit of the doubt too. We're not going to use the past relationship and the person with cheap power to just say, yeah, man, them have a cheap power too. We're going to mash it down. Because those things create mistrust in the relationship. And because you keep on thinking about that, you will never be able to move on properly with this person because you are using those past experiences to judge what will happen in this relationship. Man. How many of us have done that? We have to, have to, have to get past that and come to that understanding and acceptance that the person we are marrying now is not the person from our past. And we should not use those experiences to dictate what happens in our current relationship. Wow. And it follows up with question seven that says, how do I overcome my partner's sexual past? Um, if persons look on you and tell you, say, them don't have a sexual past, they, might, they probably lie, unless they're virgins. Yeah. But if you so meet up on a person who has had a sexual past, whether it is through, you know, dry home thing they used to dry home from their previous boyfriend or they used to perform oral sex or it's just that they used to definitely have sex whatever it is somebody might come with a past just don't hold it against them because you know what we're now going into hypocritical status because if we have a past why would we hold it against them when we wouldn't want someone to hold our past against us Hmm? Yeah. So you overcoming your partner's sexual past means that you are starting anew. And whatever they did in the past, it doesn't matter. It does not matter. Just like when we become Christians, what we did in the past doesn't matter to God anymore. He cast all of those things in the sea of forgetfulness 
never to be remembered anymore. So now here we are moving into a new life with our spouse. And who have to the facts say, um, they miss the engaging and gangbang when them did younger. Why we need to hold that against them? I mean, you knew what you were getting into, so why call an audible now when you're in premarital counseling? Just know, say, it doesn't matter what anybody comes to you and say, listen to me, next time I've seen a song, say, I'll when she have 10 man, me have to be 11, yeah, man, treat it like that. So anybody come to you and tell about her, tell about him, say, yeah, man, I might know, though. Stop on the person, on them, on them past, too. on them past. It's yours now. The person is yours. You're with them now. So the way to overcome it is to embrace it and move past it. Embrace it. Know that that was in the past, and just don't go with that. Listen to me. We'll start something new right now, because that's what God did for us. When He saved us, He started something new in us. Who? Hey. He started something new in us. So how dare we hold our partners past over their heads? Nah, man. That's petty. And we don't take note of wrongs in our relationship. Remember, that's what the Bible says. You know? Yeah, man, that's what the Bible says. Love, patient, love, kind, love does not envy our goals. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. Yeah, man, we not we not we not focus on them something there. We'll move on, yeah? Yes, man. So, yes, they had a past, but they are coming into a new life with you. How new, how exciting, it depends on you and your ability to really say, you know what? I had a past. I did too. I don't want you to hold it against me, so I won't hold it against you. Hey, Mariah, watch your <laughs> question eight says, how do we control the nature, the carnal nature of ourselves and replace it with selfless love that the Bible teaches with regards to sex in marriage? Now, I just read 1 Corinthians 13, or just recited 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 8. Now, let me just repeat it. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. That is the love that God expects us to have with each other and that extends to our erotic expression of love ladies and gentlemen now if we are to really and truly control that carnal nature of ourselves and replace it with that selfless love that the bible talks about we have to one focus on our spouse's pleasure during sex and foreplay if you are committed to that trust me that is how you can replace that whole carnal do -do 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 nature of sex and what them call it effing and dogs in your yeah, man we not look on that we are looking on the honor part of it. we are look on the selfless thing we are look on the facts eh? all right if me committed to your pleasure and you committed to mine it's not about me individual no one you please me but if we committed like that it's like a foregone conclusion, y'all. Focus on your partner's pleasure during sex and foreplay. The next thing, they dream. Start thinking about how to make sex more meaningful and satisfying for your spouse. That's a way to do that. The next thing is for you to verbally affirm your spouse during sex. Baby, I love you. I love having sex with you. You are like the best person. Yeah, man, start talk to them. Make them know, say, Oh my God, this is a special, special 
time for me. You know, this man loves me and loves my good good. Oh my God. You know what I'm saying? So talk to them, man. Talk to your man, ladies, and tell her how you love the rock hard penis that he has for you. Tell him that you love what he does to you with it. You love how he makes you come hello verbally affirm your spouse okay the next thing is don't stop loving your spouse after the climax of sex i know some persons don't like to cuddle after sex but that's not that's not just the only way you can you know love on your spouse after sex after your climax there are other ways you know what i'm saying have you eaten all day you want me to rub your feet hmm? Yeah, man. So don't stop loving your spouse after you would have climax. So that's a way that you can really and truly control the carnal nature of yourself and replace it with that selfless love the Bible talks about. Question nine says, when the other person is not in the mood and you are not, how do you deal with that? And you know, I am going to stop there because this is an important question for a lot of couples, especially persons who have a high sex drive and the person does it, doesn't, how do I deal with that? You know what I'm saying? So I think I'm going to start there. I think I'm going to start there tonight and we're going to continue with those other two questions next week so that we can get a real true understanding of what to do in those situations. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you again. You see, communication, don't sleep on communication. Communication is so important in relationship. It boosts that intimate intimacy that we want to have in our relationship. You cannot have intimacy without actually talking, without communicating. And I'm not talking about communication when the body are communicate with each other. No, I'm not going to talk about that. Talk. Talk to each other. Let them know what I like, what I don't like. And when you're in your premarital counseling sessions, if you realize, say, your pastor or your counselor are grown, the issue of sex and talking about sex, hello, talk about it. Hint it. Say, um, so and so and so. I want to talk about this. Talk about it. Because there's no way that you can really go into your relationship in marriage blind like that if you don't talk about it. I'm not telling you to go and sample the goods beforehand. I'm telling you, talk about your sexual likes and dislikes. Because as my counselor would have said, it's easier to break off an engagement than to break off a marriage ladies and gentlemen it has been a real real pleasure being with here being with you here tonight um if you have any questions if you have any concerns if you just want to talk if you want some support if you feel like you want some help don't be afraid so just reach out to us at info at family all the way dot com or family at ume radio dot com for exclusive clips for support and offers, you can visit us at familyalltheway.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, of course, and follow us on all social media at UME Radio, hashtag UME Radio. And don't forget to follow me, Arthur Giselle St. James on IG. Yes, man, go on and follow me, follow me. Yes, so that you can know what we're going to talk about next week i am so excited to talk to you next week and listen to me i hope tonight's show was definitely something that was eye-opening for you and that indeed when you go home or while you're there with your spouse or in your next premarital counseling session that some of these questions will come up for you thank you for tuning in tonight and i look forward to seeing you here next week same time same place with another exciting topic until then, have great sex, as the Lord intended. Underneath it all, who are we sexually? Bible, cufflinks, and stilettos, with Giselle St. James. 
for mature audiences only. Watch Bible, Cufflinks, and Stilettos on Carib Vision, midnight on Mondays, and Friday nights at 11 p.m. Sponsored by Women and Men of Excellence Outreach Ministries. Underneath it all, who are we sexually? Bible, Cufflinks, and Stilettos, with Giselle St. James. For mature audiences only. Watch Bible, Cufflinks, and Stilettos on Carib Vision, midnight on Mondays, and Friday nights at 11 p.m. Sponsored by Women and Men of Excellence Outreach Ministries.